Other uh, events tonight, uh, we, we definitely heard of uh, some kind of gathering near the uh, uh, fifth precinct in Minneapolis. That's near uh, 31st and uh, Nicollet. It's kind of right in the heart of the uh, uptown area. Yeah. Um, David Schumann joins us right now to tell us uh, what's going on there. David? Well, we'll wait till, we'll wait till we get David's audio, but we can talk over this picture until he's able to speak. Uh, this is a much bigger gathering than, than we were led to believe. Obviously, uh, that's First Avenue. Uh, the fifth precinct's kind of right in the heart of the uh, uh, uptown area, and, and there's a, a good sized crowd. I can't tell if the people in the safety vest in the upper left part of the screen under the First Avenue live bug. Uh, are any kind of law enforcement folks, or if those are more like construction workers. I see some of them have white hats on. I don't see a lot of police as you do, but I certainly see some people uh, gathered in that area. We had heard earlier that there were police on the rooftop at the uh, 5th, uh, and then we also heard uh, that there might have been some fires in the area. We didn't see any evidence of that, but pretty sizable crowd. This is, isn't this the 5th Precinct? You were saying yes. Yes, yeah. it is a fifth precinct. So I, yeah. I, from what right I'm seeing, people were saying that crews, well, the, I should say protesters, they were saying it was a peaceful protest, just from what I'm gathering on social media here, so I can't, you know, verify all this, but from what I'm seeing and a bunch of people who are tweeting and saying things that the, the group was saying they're peaceful protesters and they've been there pretty much most of the evening since the, the curfew came down at 8 o'clock, uh, obviously not following that curfew. Also, like you said, reports of some police officers on the roof, but we can't really see at this point. Hopefully, when we talk to David Schumann, he might have a better idea of what is going on there. It's, uh, I, so this is one of several protests, obviously, going across the city, cities right now. I, I'd really like to be able to find out where exactly are the police officers, the National Guard, um, firefighters. I, I, I think what, you know, I think there might be two camps on that. Number one is if people are going to gather and violate the, the law, uh, maybe they'll just let them violate the law, uh, law, the law being the curfew, as long as they don't cause problems. And a lot of times the police will stage uh, a couple blocks away, and then if there is a big problem, then they'll go ahead and go in. You, you know, the other, you know, unusual thing, in the middle of a global pandemic, when you start arresting a bunch of people, uh, what do you do? Do you put them all in a bus in handcuffs? Do you have to place a mask on them? Do you have them around one another? If you take them to jail, do you leave them in the jail? There are just other issues that you have to wrestle with just because of the, the state of the world when it comes to a, uh, a, a health standpoint right now. And I know that the governor even alluded to that a little bit this morning during his 10 a.m. press conference. But uh, there, there might be people that look at this and go, gee, the letter of the law says you're not supposed to be out after 8 o'clock. And there might be other people that say, hey, uh, we want to be civilly disobedient and we're deciding to violate that law and we're going to peacefully it, protest. Yeah, it, it's really interesting, the contrast, though, between what is happening here in Minneapolis and what we saw going on over in St. Paul as we talked to Aaron Hiss as she said, you know, very quiet there, and it seems like everybody is following the curfew that has been set there in uh, St. Paul. Really good point. She saw one automobile and two people on a bicycle, and she said other than that, it was like eerily quiet. So, yeah, this is a dramatic difference as we look in the uh, uptown area near the 5th Precinct Live of, uh, of Minneapolis. Uh, this is around 30, this is around Nicollet Avenue, um, and you can see traffic moving freely uh, behind the green light there. But uh, I, I, again, I, I, I think the police uh, and the governor might be satisfied. And it's really, I think, much more of the governor's control from what we heard today to go ahead and let people gather and say, you know what, we will disobey the law. We'll peacefully do it. We want to continue to protest. And as long as maybe they don't cause trouble, maybe that's the trade off uh, yeah. that, uh, that that nothing happens. Yeah, you might be right about that because I can see through the traffic cameras. It looks like everything that they've kind of started clearing off where we were earlier with Mike Max down there on 35W. Uh, oh, in that area? In that area, it looked like it. I just saw a little glance of the. Um, of the traffic camera. I don't know if we can get Maxi back to us. Well, that or we'll stay with this as we see the fireworks go off and more people coming and going. I mean, obviously, there's there's hundreds of people out uh, in this area. Yes, um, can you hear me now? I think David's trying to talk to us. Oh, David? Hey, hey David. I, I, I know. Yeah, exactly. hey, guys. Sorry about those that, audio problems that's before. All right. we that's are okay. You know what, two David? Blocks. Where are you, David? We're two blocks away from the fifth precinct and there are a lot of people down here we just saw fireworks going off you can hear them now 
think you guys can hear that. And my eyes are not good enough to see two blocks away, but I think the camera can zoom all the way down. You can see the massive crowd swarming around that 5th Precinct uh, police building. But right now, everything does appear to be pr uh, peaceful. We have not been able to see with our eyes or our camera a single member of law enforcement. We may be mistaken on that. That's not confirmed, but we don't see any. You see this group marching now. And, I mean, the, the curfew is just completely being ignored, of course, uh, different from the images we've seen in St. Paul. And we are on an overpass just to get on. We actually drove by Mike Max earlier to get to this spot, and cars were, I think you probably saw it, cars were parked along the entrance ramp on the highway, blinkers on, and didn't really see any members of law enforcement anywhere. But here is this large crowd coming down. We're above Lake Street uh, at the 5th Precinct, two blocks off in the distance, and everything looks to be peaceful so far. Yeah, I want to correct one thing I said, David, and then we'll get back to you. You know, this is, this is about two blocks off of 35W near First, and Blaisdell's about a block away. I, I had the complete wrong area when I was talking about it earlier, and I just want to reorient people as to where this is. This isn't terribly far from the third. No, it's not. Uh, so this is right around First First and Blaisdell. But anyway, David, so, you know, Amelia and I were wondering if, if police were maybe staging in a separate area or if they were several blocks away, but it sounds like you haven't seen... Uh, any kind of law enforcement presence. No, and we are actually on an overpass on 35W. That's why I'm not in front of the camera. There's just not enough room for me to stand there. Um, but we haven't seen any law enforcement staging. Uh, they could be around, and maybe they will come down later. But for now, not really is nothing. And, you know, we had expected to see some National Guard members earlier. I reported that Governor Tim Walz ensured that the state would be in complete control tonight. Um, and no violence, not, not like we've seen last night. The air was a little hazy with smoke before. That's probably from the fireworks. We haven't seen any flames. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess we expected to see more out here. And, and David, what, I know there's a gas station right over there. Uh, any disruption over there, uh, anything like that? But I know you said that it's pretty peaceful. I don't know if you can see. You're pretty far away. Uh, I drove by it yesterday, Sorry, and the guy painted the a sign on it that said empty. So if you, if you look at the print of Stop and Shop, it's boarded up. It's been boarded up. Oh, since, it has been boarded since up since Monday. Uh, I actually since Tuesday, and there's a sign on it that says oh, yeah. empty. Um, so I, 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 I'm I not sure if, right if now, people would get in there if they okay. if they'd find much. Although they they broke through and they did get in. Maybe empty was just a ploy. Well, that, I see that place I, is definitely I being I see looted. that empty sign. I see that empty sign that I just spotted it, and uh, the boards are still up. I still see empty. No one looks to be trying to get into it right now, although there are a lot of people around the building. Just standing in front of it. Well, David, can you go back and pan yeah. to it? Because I, I think it has been breached, um, and I thought I saw some people yeah. coming out with stuff underneath it. I know you're shooting a camera angle from a long way away. So, I mean, I, I, I literally drove by there a couple days ago, but I can see that people are coming in and out of it right there. And it, it, it looks like that yeah, guy's look like he... holding up a trophy. That guy's coming out with something. There maybe, are a couple. Maybe people. empty was just a way to keep people out, but that big guy there just came out of the store and now people are going in so um, and it looks to me like they're carrying materials out of there that guy's got a case yeah. of something on his shoulder are, um, and people are going in and out so um, you, you know I don't I, I don't haven't had a chance to talk to that any... part because I can't see that well okay that's, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. You know, stay on it because we'll keep an eye if you stay where your where your camera operator was that would be great and we'll keep an eye of what's going on and I'll ask you a couple of questions while we're doing it um, because people are definitely having a their way going in and out of the store. I, I haven't had a chance to get on the phone to talk to any sources. I don't know if you had. Amelia and I were wondering if philosophically if the idea is we're not going to enforce an 8 o'clock curfew as long as there's no major violence and we'll let people do this or maybe there's a degree you know of we, degree of looting. Uh, have you talked to anyone? David, we'll, we'll come right back to you. We're